why are you standing in front of a modified Hills Voice? <laughs> so Hills Voice, definitely the inspiration. In my time as head of energy and infrastructure at the EVC, we came to realize there's a percentage of the population that don't have the ability to park off street in their homes. If you've got a garage, if you've got a driveway, the EV transition for you is probably going to be pretty easy. Because everyone's got 24, uh, 240 volt, 10 amp power at their home in that setting. For those people who park on the street though, we were looking for a way to easily bridge the gap between the home and the car so that you can use your own electricity from your own solar panels or your own off-peak tariff to charge a car in the place that is most convenient to you. Never before has a sidewalk been a more impermeable barrier than when you have power in your house and you're trying to get it. That's right. And this is a drop. It's a method to cross the gap. We're bridging the gap with steel and aluminium and copper so that you can reach from your home electrical supply safely to your car. Please contribute. It really helps my independent, honest journalism for you. So let's talk about the solutions that already exist for this and why this kind of fixes some of the issues. Sure. You'd know better than I. I've only seen kind of stories on Facebook or walked across kind of, you know, those sort of strips on the ground with like the little plastic covering just someone running an extension cable. Sure. What are the wackiest ones you've seen or, or the most common ones for people trying to fix the problem of getting power out to their car on the street? Sure. So there are solutions that are not wacky, right? There are fair and good ways to do this. Uh, the primary solution used by most drivers in this circumstance today is public charging. They take the car to the local shopping centre, they plug it in once a week, and that's how they charge their car. This is not terrible, but it's not as convenient as charging at home, and it is more expensive than charging at home. And so for some people, it presents as a barrier to shifting to a car, for a, to an electric car. For an EV owner, it presents as a missed opportunity. They'd rather be able to charge at home. It would suit them better. Assuming they are charging at home, if you take an extension lead from your house to your car and just leave the cable lying on the footpath, that will work. You will be able to charge your car that way. Of course, if someone trips over that cable, that's going to cause a problem. So you can assume that local governments are going to start regulating to prevent that from being the way it's done. I've seen people run extension leads from the second story of their house into a tree on the nature strip and then down to the car. I've seen people attach power leads to fishing rods and run that over the footpath, much as we're br bridging the footpath today. And there's been people who have done a homegrown DIY underboring of the footpath to put stormwater pipe in and run power in an unprotected pipe under the footpath. There have been lots of things done. What we're bringing is a solution that has been properly engineered and endorsed by local council with a trial in the city of Marybeck. So that trial at the moment, I understand it is a trial. There's currently a number of people who have expressed interest, but it's early days. Let's say it's 12 months down the track. Mm -hmm. Would I be able to, what, what's your vision for it? Can I walk into Bunnings, pay 200 bucks, take it home in three pieces, assemble it, run my cable and I'm good to go? Or what is the deployment pathway to a mass adoption? Sure. Like so it is unlikely to be the case in the near term that you'll be buying one of these at Hammer Barn and installing it yourself. The reason for that is you are installing, or we are installing, a piece of equipment that operates in public space. Local councils own the risk in the public domain. If someone injures themselves on the footpath, that is the local council's problem. And so for any solution along these lines, they will exert some controls yep. in order to keep people safe. Once something like this, we'll go to the local council. Local council will have a published process and a list of approved vendors that they have determined are providing a fit and safe solution. The insurances will all be correct. The solutions will be tried and tested. The resident will have some comfort that local council has done some work vetting who's going to be doing these things so that we don't have the sorts of solutions that might be deployed and then fail in an unsafe way. Doesn't mean it'll be overly burdensome. Homeowners engage with local councils regularly for all sorts of things. This will be a thing that you engage with local council for. Well, I'm excited about the near future in which when I'm walking home late at night from this train station, the local ringtail possums are following me along the fences, the power lines, and in future a... What are, what are, we, what's, what are we calling it? What's the product name is the VCS1, because I'm exceptionally creative when it comes to naming products, and this is the first of many. The power arm. Power arm, sounds good. I think someone might already have done power arm, but there's, there's lots of good words you could call it. The name of the product is VCS1. Thank Did you, you want to take a video of the thing oh, in operation? Of course, yeah. All right, so I've just pulled in here. That's right. And now I've got the chasm of the sidewalk to deal with. 
My house is all the way over there. So we pick up the cable from here. The counterweight lifts the boom up. We swing it around, plug into the car, and go home for tea. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for liking, subscribing, and sharing my videos. It really helps me make more videos like this for you. And have a look at the suggested videos up above. I'm pretty sure you'll like those as well. Thanks, and see you later.